Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Saturday, the 28th of August. And, it, of course, football is upon us. We've got some great fixtures to look forward to today. Obviously, Legion at play Sunday. I will be doing a watch-along for that game. Um, so make sure you join me for that. But I will also be doing Arsenal, City, Liverpool, Chelsea today on the Just Your Football Show as well. Doing a watch-along for that. So make sure you join me for that. Big shout-out for Connor as well, who joined me yesterday on the Big Match Preview. That's still available now on the channel. If you haven't watched it yet, please do check that out. Always great numbers when I have Connor on. Uh, great video. Great, great video. Uh, if I do say so myself. But listen, we've got loads to get into in today's Daily Leads. It's everything concerning Leeds United in around Four Parts and Ellen Road. Um, please do as well vote for me in the Football Content Awards. I've been nominated for Best New Content Creator. And I will also be doing the Yorkshire Three Peaks with the All Leeds TV gang as well. If you can, please do donate. We're a while away from our actual target. So if you could take a moment to just click the link that's in the description and please do donate and, and, and help us uh, achieve that target for the Leeds United Foundation. So yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that in a couple of weeks' time as well. Um, but I've rambled on enough now. Let's get into today's video. And this is the moment when I take a stand well, guys, we're going to start, first of all, uh, with some news that we missed yesterday. Obviously, yesterday I put out the video with Connor, which I'm sure a lot of you will have checked out. If you haven't, please do. Um, but yesterday, Leeds announced that defender Charlie Creswell had signed a new contract with the club. Um, we also secured his new long-term centre-back partnership, Leo Higeldi, uh, signing from Celtic for an undisclosed fee. Um, Leeds announced that as well on Friday. Look, for me, Creswell and Higeldi, the next Virgil van Dijk were told, them two, I mean, Leeds United in the centre-back areas were stacked. Were stacked. We have four great centre-backs at the club currently uh, in the first team, in and around the first team, and then on the conveyor belt, we have Charlie Creswell and, of course, Leo Higeldi. We are stacked in that area. I fully expect these two to, to go on and represent Leeds United at first-team level. There's a lot being said about Creswell for season after season after season. He will make it through, and the fact that some of the some of the links or, or some of the comparisons with Higeldi to, to Virgil van Dijk, then, of course, he's going to make it big in the game as well. So them two, as a centre-back partnership, could be there for, for years to come. I'm, I'm buzzing we've managed to acquire that signature. And Charlie Creswell, of course, got his call up to the England under-21s as well, which is absolutely amazing. Um, not only that, we had Cody Drama, Louis Bate, Gelda and Greenwood, all named in the under-20 uh, England squad as well. We had Charlie Allen. Uh, he's been um, called up to the Northern Ireland under-19 squad. And, of course, Patrick Bamford. Patrick Bamford got his call up to the senior squad for a trio of World Cup qualifiers. Um, you know, so it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, the representation of this Leeds United squad under Bielsa is just crazy. It's crazy. Two players that haven't made it to their nations is, of course, Diego Lorente and Rodrigo. Neither have been selected for Luis Enrique's September squad. I'm happy about that. I'm not going to lie. Um, Lorente, we don't want him going on international duty when he's just come back. I think he starts on Sunday as well for me. But just hearing that that youth that we have that no longer has been taken away from our club, we're actually buying it in as well as you know creating our own uh, exceptionally talented players. It's, it's just class, honestly. And uh, I'm absolutely over the moon. Um, we're now going to speak about transfers, guys. Um, yes, transfers. Uh, Phil Hay did an article yesterday, a really great article in The Athletic, as it always is the case. He will be joining me in a, during the international break as well. Um, he will be coming on the Just Your Football Show, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but he was just talking about how Leeds, it looks like they haven't progressed this window when in actual fact they're okay. Um, I know a lot of fans are frustrated with the lack of business, but he just went into some specifics that I wanted to just go through with you uh, now, so um, as we're aware, Victor Orta has a, has a keen interest in Noah Lang. Um, at the time, he was a goal scoring Ajax winger, uh, but Bielsa was not sure on him. Um, headlines followed, uh, but an offer did not, and Lang joined Club Bruges in, instead. And the same went for Matthias Kuna, who was Hertha Berlin's Brazilian forward, who has now joined up with Atletico Madrid. Um, and there's a lot to be said about Victor Orta, maybe. If Bielsa wasn't in charge, some of these deals may, maybe would have been done. But, you know, Bielsa likes specific players. He wants specific play, you know, things from these individuals. And it's quite interesting to see. And maybe some of us will look at it and say, well, we missed the ball. We should have signed Noah Lang before he went Bruges. We should have signed Kuna, um, you know, when, when we had the chance as opposed to him 
you know, hiking up that price and going to Atletico Madrid. Um, but in Phil Hayes article, I will put the link in the description. He just goes into a little bit more detail with it. And he mentions Lewis O'Brien as well. Of course, he said that Leeds United were very big on Conor Gallagher. They really wanted him. They then looked at Lewis O'Brien. Um, and again, we got some more meat on the bones. Uh, he said that the two clubs have hit an impasse. We value him at four million. Huddersfield want no less than eight. And he said that there's no sign that either club are shifting from those positions. And the the view at Ellen Road is that they do not need Lewis O'Brien enough to make the extra money worth paying. So it's quite interesting. Like four million in football in terms probably seems quite 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 small, but we know with Bielsa as well, he has a big say on if a player's worth paying that. And maybe he's had it, they've all had a chat around the table and said, look. For that extra four million, we're okay. We don't need to be paying eight million for Lewis O'Brien. We've got Adam Forshaw coming through. A lot of you might disagree with that, but it's smart. It's smart business in it. And listen, what do we have now? Four days left of the window. You know, maybe something will happen on the window. Maybe Huddersfield will change their valuation. They know that he's only got a year, etc., on a deal. Um, I, look, I'm not saying. No, if I'm being honest, I think we're done. <laughs> I do. I think we're done. And everything's coming out with that, you know, Phil Hayes' article. Um, apparently, as well, which is news um, brought to us by The Athletic, that Leeds were offered Harry Winks on loan uh, from Spurs, uh, and we turned that down as well. Could he have been an extra body? I'm not a massive fan of Harry Winks, but could he have done a job more than likely? Yeah, especially as a squad player. And apparently we turned that down. And, and I just don't see Leeds United being very active. Maybe, maybe. My only saving grace is maybe come the transfer deadline, Deals get done and they get done quick. Maybe Huddersfield needs some cash. They offer Lewis O'Brien at a cheaper price. Leeds take it. We know that Cristiano Ronaldo, unfortunately, has gone back to Manchester United. I was I was hoping he would go to City, but he's going to Manchester United. That puts Dan James even further down the pecking order. Is there a chance to get Dan James with a loan with an option to buy? And Le a lot of Leeds fans will watch this and say no, but me all day long, all day long, especially now that Pervader's gone out on loan. So some things may happen, but I just feel that it doesn't look likely. You know, Parag Maraf did an interview. He told the Sports Unlocked podcast uh, that, we, you know, we've invested £100 million into the club um, last season, and that was to last for a couple of years. He's on record as saying that. Um, he said it was really about the investment that we made last year to last us a certain period of time and maybe just add little bits here and there. And he said, you know, we brought in five big signings, five big signings, and they were together on the pitch for something like five games because of injuries, COVID, all that sort of stuff. So he said, we haven't actually fully experienced the full arsenal of talent that we brought in last year. And maybe there's a case of that at the club as well, you know. We don't really need to do it. We didn't really experience the full squad. Of course, fans want players in. I do. I do. Of course I do. But Phil A's article, Parag Maraf, what Rad Rosani said about Adam Forshaw, you know, he was asked the question, where's our new midfielder? And he, he replied with Adam Forshaw and, and free love arts, you know what I mean? So that was a big claim, wasn't it, you know? Um, we're hearing in Belgium that Leeds have been priced out of a, a Noah Lang deal at 30 million. But again, it doesn't seem that Biel, uh, Bielsa sold on him. Victor Orta is but it doesn't seem like Bielsa is. Phil Hayes has, has mentioned that. Daryl DK, the Orlando City striker who was at Barnsley, um, LUFC fan zone reached out to the club. Um, it says, unfortunately, we don't comment on rumours. However, I can say that we plan to keep Daryl at Orlando. So it looks like he's going nowhere. Um, Rad's confirming that that new midfielder is Adam Forshaw. Phil Hayes coming out and saying Bielsa's not really keen on the players that have been put put to him in the past. Parag Maraf saying the 100 million that we spent last season. I'm sorry to put a downer on it, guys. I know it's not, not all you want to hear, but it's there in black and white. My only saving grace is deadline day. I think we could be busy if people's valuations change. Because Angus and Otter have told us that the money is there. The money is there. They just won't be taken for mugs. And that's fair. And that is fair. And we're going to be okay, you know. If we beat Burnley tomorrow on Sunday, four points from the first three, we're okay. Do you know what I mean? God forbid if we get any injuries, but I still think we'll be okay in that scenario anyway. But at 
But I'm just hopeful that something happens on deadline day. Of course we are. Uh, I think we all are. Um, apparently, Leeds United are kind of keen on, on Daniel Jebison. Um, he's a striker that plays at Chef United. Uh, apparently, both Leeds and Everton have been linked with a swoop for him. Um, there is loan interest from clubs further down the pyramid, such as Sunderland and Doncaster Rovers. Jukanovic has been speaking about him and said, look, he's a very good prospect as a football player, a very good worker. He's really healthy. He says, I'm sure he'll be an important player in the Premier League and in the England national team. Um, and, and we know that Leeds United are always on the always on the fly. We know we're signing Leo Hugel. They're getting Creswell on a new deal. We're always looking to improve the under-23s. Uh, so Daniel Jebison could be could be someone that, that may come to the club. We know how much work we've done in the under-23s this summer, more than we've done in the in the first team. Uh, it's been reported as well in Carrillo del Sporto that Leeds United are looking at Gary Middell. He's been long sought after by Leeds, apparently. I'm calling BS. Um, but it, <laughs> um, reports state that he's likely to move to La Liga side anyway, Elche, where Kiko Cassi is currently on loan. Um, he's 34 year old. He doesn't fit the profile. I think it's lazy. He's Chilean. He's played under Bielsa before 27 times between 07 and 2010. Uh, represented Chile at the World Cup. Um, you know, I just don't see it. I don't see it. And the reason I don't see it as well, because all the noises from the club are that we're not getting any done. We're not getting any done, are we? So, yeah. Sorry I put a downer on it. <laughs> but I can only report what's out there, guys. I can only report what's out there. Um, it's quite interesting reading the Phil Hay article, as I say. Um, the fact that these players have been offered to be in the past and he's not been keen on them. We know that he's big on, look, if you don't think a player's worth it. Um, just watch out for deadline day. Watch out for deadline day. That's what I'd say. Um, I still see Dan James being a big possibility, you know, alone with an option to buy. I do, especially now that Ronaldo's coming. And I'd be I'd be good with that, man. I'd be good with that. Genuinely, I think it'd be a good signing, definitely. Especially with Pervader being on loan at Blackburn. But we'll have to wait and see. Let me know your thoughts on the articles and, of course, that potential, potential Dan James deal being back on. Uh, make sure you join me a little bit later on for the watch-alongs as well. Um, love, love doing them. Love doing them, I do. I can't lie. And we've got some great, great fixtures to look forward to. And then on Sunday, we've, we've of course, got Burnley versus Leeds. Come on, three points finally back on the board. But thank you, as always, for joining me. Enjoy your weekend if I don't see you on the watch-alongs. Um, yeah, and I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds.